Hi. Traumatic cataracts are extremely mysterious and uh, it's very difficult to interpret and understand them. Let me begin my presentation with the first case. This is a long-standing traumatic cataract in an elderly patient. Slit lamp examination reveals the nucleus is decentered. Well, is it subluxated or am I dealing with an empty capsular bag? What is the status of anterior capsule and the posterior capsule? Can't tell presently. Is there any vitreous disturbance? Again, not sure about that. Well, the B scan is normal. So, begin my surgery, and as I puncture the anterior capsule, I realize that the zonules are quite healthy. So, it was very easy to perform the rexus. But as I'm about to manage the nucleus, I realize that something is not right. I become suspicious. I inject OVD and push the nucleus aside to realize that I have a big PC tear underneath which is probably pre-existing. Now, how do we go about in such a situation? I prolapsed the nucleus out into the bag and I decided to go ahead with the IOL scaffold technique. A multi-piece IOL is placed into the sulcus and then the nucleus is emulsified above it. Well, the outcome was very good in this case and the patient recovered excellent vision. So in traumatic cataracts, one has to be ready for the surprises. But in this case, there was a clue. When I went back and looked at the biometer, the antechamber depth is unusually very large. And this should definitely have raised some suspicion about a pathology in the posterior capsule because the nucleus was quite posterior. So looking at everything is so critical when you're trying to deal with a traumatic cataract. You have to keep your eyes and all your senses open just to find out that you may not be missing that one thing. So like life, traumatic cataracts are mysterious. You never know what you're going to get. In traumatic cataracts, prognosis varies from poor to excellent depending upon so many factors. But in my experience, I have divided them into four important factors which can lead to a poor prognosis. And my four poor prognostic indicators are a presence of a posterior segment involvement, that is presence of a retinal tear or retinal attachment, large corneal tear involving the visual axis, presence of an optic neuropathy, traumatic or because of glaucoma, lastly infection. If none of the above are a factor in a concerned case, then the prognosis is quite good. Traumatic cataracts come in various different sizes and shapes. The first variant would be they may come with nothing at all, that is with an intact capsule and a healthy zonules but a history of trauma. Number two would be ruptured anterior or posterior capsule. Number three would be rupture of both the anterior and the posterior capsule. And lastly, we could have a subluxated cataract. But in all these situations, no matter what the situation is, invariably the prognosis is very good, provided you have a good retina and a good cornea. So whenever we encounter a case traumatic cataract, it's mandatory for us to rule out whether it's associated with a corneal tear, which is sealed or not sealed, rule out presence of intraocular foreign bodies and always perform a B-scan to load posterior segment pathology. And in many situations, presence of coexisting pathologies like corneal tear or posterior segment pathology, the case needs to be dealt with appropriately staged surgery involving multiple interventions and obviously teamwork has a great role to play in such situations. Now moving on to the next case, this is an 8 year old boy who has had a penetrating injury with a stick 2 days prior to presentation. This was about 4 to 5 years back. He has a sealed corneal wound. The wound is not in the visual axis, luckily. There is a split in the anticapsule and the lens matter is swollen. The antechamber is extremely shallow and the pressures are high. When the anticapsule is open, it's always mandatory that urgent intervention has to be done in such cases. The surgery is being done under IV sedation and a posterior subtenance block. The capsule is stained so that delineation can be done very well. Soft lens matter is aspirated out with ease. But as the last bit of uh, lens matter is being aspirated out, I realized that a, a quite a big posterior capsule tear is tearing at me. Without withdrawing my irrigation cannula, 
I inject diluted tricot to check for any prolapsed vitreous, but thankfully there was none and the anterior hyoid was intact until this stage. When we encounter such a situation, our goal is to ensure that we the posterior does not enlarge and we don't have an anterior hyoid rupture. By following the simple philosophy of maintain the chamber equilibrium always, uh, we can uh, implant the lens into the bag as I did in this case and also remove the OVD behind the lens without enlarging the posterior capsule tear and without rupturing the anterior hyaloid. Postoperatively, the patient did extremely well and he enjoys an excellent vision. It is four years in surgery and I saw him a few weeks back and he continues to do well. Moving on to another variant of trauma, an elderly man with a blunt injury has presented with a subluxed cataract which is intumescent. There is 3 to 4 clock hours of zonular dehiscence. The first thing I need to do is to rule out a vitreous prolapse and this is done by using a triamcin acetate and in fact it is confirmed that the vitreous is indeed prolapsed out. So before even we do rexis, it's mandatory that we deal with the vitreous first. Antivitrectomy is done and then dispersive OVD is used to tamponate that area. Now I need to begin with my cataract surgery. The rexus is done. A capsule hook is used to support the area of zonal dehiscence and then the CTR is placed into the bag. Now with these two instruments in place, the bag is reasonably stable so that I can go ahead and perform my phaco emulsification. The nucleus is emulsified. And once the cataract is removed, I need to deal with the vitreous still because the vitreous continues to prolapse to the zonular weakness area. So in this case, I am going to the past plan approach to deal with the vitreous. Once it is done, a multi-piece lens is placed into the sulcus uh, with the IOL trap technique wherein the optic of the lens is captured in the excess margin. These are the post-op pictures. Again, the patient had an excellent visual outcome. Moving on to the next variant of presentation. Now, this is a 35-year-old man who presented with a workplace injury. And this is the picture. There's a corneal tear, a large foreign body is in the antechamber, there's a ruptured anterocapsule and a possible traumatic cataract. The B scan does not reveal any posterior segment pathology at this moment. He is presented just about 4-5 to five hours after the trauma. The patient is counseled regarding the guarded visual prognosis following the surgery and also explained the need for secondary surgery in the event of any subsequent complications like retinal attachment or infection which he may develop in the post-op period. Now this is how the eye looks in the OR table. We can see that the anticapsule is split wide open extending up to the equator on either sides. Let us be clear about the goals of the surgery. First thing would be to remove the foreign body, then suture the corneal wound and then deal with the traumatic cataract. An incision is planned and created in an axis which is parallel to or oriented with the long axis of the foreign body. Under the cover of dispersive OVD, the large foreign body is extracted out gently. The corneal tear is then sutured. Once it is done, I am having a look at the lens and the lens needs to be dealt with now itself because the anticapsule is already split wide open. It is not difficult to aspirate the soft lens and once it is done, the intraocular lens is implanted into the bag. Now before implanting the lens into the bag, I trim the anticapsule a little bit using Vana scissors and forceps. For IOL power calculation, we did the biometry of the other healthy eye since the biometry of this eye could not be done.
and in spite of such a bad presentation the patient did extremely well simply because his posterior segment was normal and the retina and other things were absolutely normal and even with the sutures he enjoyed a good visual outcome of a 612 the sutures were removed later and 2 years later he came with posterior capsular pacification which was yagged and then again he continues to do well a 3 year old boy with a penetrating injury 2 months back we have a sealed corneal tear with a scar traumatic cataract a posterior hernia and with a suspected anterior and a posterior capsular tear the b scan does not reveal any posterior segment issue the goal is to remove the cataract and put in a posterior chamber lens either in the bag preferably or in the sulcus meticulous planning is necessary to deal with such situations because our ultimate goal is to preserve whatever anterior capsule and posterior capsule which is still present there because if we can manage to implant a posterior chamber lens safely uh, that could provide an excellent visual rehabilitation for this young child so our planning and surgical steps have to be extremely careful and very well planned so the first thing i do is to go back with my bimanual cannula and begin aspirating the soft lens matter after clearing one quadrant the hands are switched very early into the surgery i realized that the posterior capsule was already torn because of the injury itself vitrector is a great way to deal with such situations well it actually acts like a multifunctional instrument it's a vitreous cutter to deal with the prolapsed vitreous we can also use it to aspirate the cortex and also it is helpful to trim the capsular margins whether anterior capsule or the posterior capsule well it's an invaluable tool to have in an ot whether with traumatic cataract or otherwise as well in such cases if you can deal with the prolapse vitreous efficiently and remove 100% of cortex the outcomes are excellent in spite of the lens being placed in the sulcus uh, because of the situation in this eye and i'm following this case for the last many months and the child continues to do well so to summarize the traumatic cataracts can present very variedly thorough preop evaluation with good counseling to the patient is the key to ensure realistic expectations from them a special note for the individual private practitioners who are practicing in smaller places My recommendation would be to get equipped with two essential things: B scan and a functioning vitrectomy unit. If you already have it in a FACO machine, that's great because a reasonably skilled cataract surgeon can give good outcomes in these deserving rural patients if certain basic uh, principles are followed. That's it. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you for watching.